thing we're talking about today is the Supreme Court pick uh, that is looming from Donald Trump. We know it's coming. And he's he said in his interview that he would he would probably nominate somebody that was on the list of eleven people that he put out prior to the election. Uh, when that list was put out, it was fairly highly praised. Uh, there were six uh, federal appeals court judges on there appointed by President uh, George W. Bush, um, and then there were some. Uh, a couple of state Supreme Court justices who had been appointed by Republican governors, um, including Ray Grunder, who's in the Eastern District here in St. Louis and was a politician prior to that uh, before getting on the court uh, years back. Um, what, what do you what do you think about these folks? The point is, it's got to be somebody who's going to toe the line, who's going to be the next uh, Justice Scalia, we hope. Our guest right now is uh, Andy Schlafly, who is an attorney and uh, the son, of course, of uh, Phyllis Schlafly, our friend, and and we miss her greatly. And, and Andy, my condolences on the loss of your mother. Thank you. I appreciate that, Mark. And thanks for having me on your wonderful show. Oh, well, thank you for giving us some time today. I appreciate that. You, you've um, you've taken a look at this list. And, you know, I was talking earlier, people have their different priorities for what needs to happen in the Supreme Court. But right up there, there to the top of it, for most conservatives, is a, a strong defense of our Second Amendment rights, along with all of our other uh, rights. Uh, and, and looking at controversial decisions like Roe versus Wade. I think the Second Amendment is going to be good for us. I'm pretty confident the pick will be strong on the Second Amendment. It's obvious some of the people got on that list because they had rendered strong opinions in defense of the Second Amendment, and that's fine. We welcome that. The more difficult issue is Roe v. Wade, and not all the people on the list are in favor of overturning Roe v. Wade. So since Trump was elected, since he re-emphasize his pledge that he's going to pick someone to overturn Roe v. Wade. I've looked further at the list, and some on the list satisfy that qualification, and some do not. Uh, let's talk about uh, who those are. Let's start with our local candidate, which would be uh, Ray Grunder. He does satisfy that qualification. He is has a strong pro-life record. It's clear he would overturn Roe v. Wade. So if I could put in a little plug for him, I think he'd be <laughs> tremendous. Well, it'd be, it'd be you know it'd be pretty cool to have a Supreme Court justice from right here in St. Louis, and I mean I've I've uh, covered Ray several times over the years when when he was still involved in local politics prior to uh, getting appointed to the bench. Yeah, he's a fine jurist, and the Supreme Court would be fortunate to have him. There's another fellow on the list named Charles Kennedy, who's and that's Kennedy, not Kennedy. Spelled C A N A D Y, and right. he would not be like Justice Kennedy. <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> good. Rather, Charles Kennedy would be tremendous. Uh, he has a strong pro life record dating back several decades. He was on the team that impeached Bill Clinton, so he's willing to stand up against the leftists. Yeah, uh, clearly that, he, that, that, that yeah. speaks well of him. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, there's some on the list who are not good, though. And we need to expose that, and, and the media is pushing the people who are not good, as you would expect. The left is probably working more on this list than I am uh, because they're trying to deflect Trump from picking a strong conservative. Instead, the left and senators are trying to tell him, no, give us, give us so-and-so because we'll get this person confirmed for you. Well, confirmation should not be an issue, Mark. I mean, we got a Republican majority Senate, so confirmation shouldn't even be a problem here. Right. Yeah, I would agree with you. I mean, there you you may end up in a situation where um, um, Senator Schumer decides he's going to hold up a particular. I mean, I, he he's a grandstander in the in the tradition of of uh, of Ted Kennedy, and I wouldn't be surprised at all for them to. I don't think they'll stake their. I don't think they'll set their stake on some of these cabinet picks. I think they're going to hold their keep their powder dry for uh, whoever he tries to appoint to the Supreme Court. I think you're exactly right because a Supreme Court pick sits there for 30 years and has much more influence than a cabinet pick who sits there only for a few years and can't really do much with the system anyway. So, so who is raising alarms in your mind right now? Who you think is going to be pushed by uh, the center and the left? 
Diane Sykes, who sits on the Seventh Circuit that's up there in Chicago, she's being pushed very hard okay. by the liberal media. Uh, they're going to try to say that he, Trump needs to pick a woman. They have very few women on that list. And they didn't make an issue of that during the campaign, but they're going to make an issue of it now. So he has to pick a woman. They're going to say it has to be Diane Sykes. Diane Sykes is not good for us on Roe v. Wade or on other issues. I mean, she struck down an Indiana law that tried to defund Planned Parenthood, and she struck it down throughout the law and says, no, you have to have taxpayer funding of Planned Parenthood under the Medicaid system. I'm I'm looking at the background on some of these people as you t- as you speak. Now she is the former wife of a prominent Wisconsin radio host who fiercely opposed Donald Trump in the primary. So maybe maybe Trump's people will x her out for reasons other than where, where she stands on uh, on abortion. You but, never know. It in- is an interesting twist to her background. <laughs> she also served on the state court system with in Wisconsin for a number of years. In one case, she imprisoned some peaceful pro-life protesters for 60 days in jail. That's a long time. Wow. It is. exercising their political beliefs. So so who besides uh, Diane Sykes should we keep our eye out for? Well, the Federal Society is pushing some of these David Souter-like candidates. A fellow named Raymond Kethledge, who reminds everybody of David Souter. He ducks the abortion issue, hasn't said that much on it. Uh, tries to avoid saying anything controversial. But we've been down that road before. The idea of a stealth pick, somebody whose views are not known, that doesn't work. It just doesn't work. Yeah, and and he worked. He was a clerk for Justice Anthony Kennedy. Yes, he was. Mm -hmm. Yes, he was. And, you know, the idea that someone's going to blossom after they get to D.C. and become a standout conservative, no, no, it never happens that way. It goes in the other direction. You need someone who's the strongest conservative you can find, and then when they go to D.C., you just hope they stay that way. That's what we're hoping with Trump, honestly. We were hoping that Trump's D.C. won't change Trump. Yeah. uh, Because everybody goes to D.C., and and all of a sudden they start thinking differently. They start caring what the media says. They start, uh, you know, trying to appease the left. They don't go in the other direction. They don't go in our direction once they get there. So we don't need another stealth nominee. Andy Schlafly is our guest. What do you think of Allison Ide from Colorado? She she uh, clerked for Clarence Thomas and was a, a speechwriter for William Bennett at some point in her life. She has a little better background than most, and Thomas's clerks are known to be more conservative than the clerks of the other justices, even the clerks of Scalia. Uh, Thomas had more conservative clerks, but unfortunately... She does not have a pro-life record either, and she's kind of ducked the issue there in Colorado. Uh, a little just too timid, a little too timid. We need people who are, who are outspoken, as Scalia was. Scalia was, was stand up. He said, this is who I am. Take it or leave it. Uh, Scalia's not going to back down, and we want someone like that who's, who's uh, you know, very confident in their views, realizes some people disagree with them but is going to stick to their principles how about mike yeah. how about mike lee's brother uh thomas um i i would suspect that he's he's pretty conservative i would think so yeah i would think so i don't know too much about him he's on the utah supreme court uh but generally like mike lee himself mike lee's pretty conservative himself too and there's some talk that maybe elevating him from the senate to the supreme court if that's a step up <laughs> yeah uh, and he's a little young, Mike Lee, a little on the young side. He's in his 40s. Okay. Uh, so, and he does not have any experience from the bench. But he's been a clerk. He's been a clerk a couple of times, but he's never been a judge. Yeah, I wondered how important that is because, you know, I was thinking back to um, – um, um, Senator Cruz. There's been some discussion of him lately, and I don't know if if he would sail through a Senate confirmation or not. I mean, I if you heard me play that bite off the top, there were a lot of people besides John Boehner who weren't being fans of him in the Senate. Would they be willing to give him a lifetime appointment to the Supreme Court? But he would certainly fit the criteria when it came to pro-life. Yes, and he's certainly qualified, and he would handle the hearings very well. And we have to think about that. Who's going to be able to handle the hearings? It's going to be rough. Through it and take the grilling. Yeah, it's it's curious that there are not more senators who are picked. I could only find one of about a hundred years ago as the last senator who was nominated to the Supreme Court 
And I'm not sure why that is, because as you say, you would think the Senate would appreciate that and the person would sail through. But on the other hand, maybe there's some rivalry in the Senate. Maybe there's some jealousy if that were to happen. I don't know. Well, and it's not all, you know, simply serving in the Senate doesn't necessarily qualify you for the bench, but then you've got exceptions like like Ted Cruz. Right. Yeah. And maybe it's just that that situation hadn't hadn't brought us up. Because he went to visit Trump, the thought dawned on me, maybe he's looking at him for this, although he claimed in that 60 Minutes interview he was going to make his nomination off of this list. So we'll... Uh, we'll he has see. said that. Honestly, my own view is that he does not have to stick to that. The purpose of the list was to indicate the type of nominee Trump would choose for the Supreme Court. If he goes off the list and picks someone who's very similar to those on the list or even more conservative than those on the list, I think that's fine, particularly if he went off the list for a woman. There are only four women on the list out of 21. I don't know how that happened. Sure. But if he went off to remedy that defect, I don't think there'd be a problem with that. Very good. Andy Schlafly, listen, I appreciate your time. And um, is there a website or anything you want to give before we get done talking? Or would you direct people? Well, you go to my website, which is conservapedia.com. It's a conservative rival to Wikipedia. So it's conservapedia, just like it sounds. And, and we have a lot of the information there. And we welcome the public to go there and edit. Andy, I appreciate your time. And I hope that once this pick is made, I'd love to get you back on here and get your thoughts about it. Fabulous. Thank you for the opportunity. Hey, Merry Christmas to you. Thanks for coming. You Thanks too. for calling in. Thank yep, you. we appreciate it. Uh, Andy Schlafly there uh, with his thoughts on these Supreme Court picks. So it does matter. Not everybody on this list is solid, uh, particularly when it comes to this issue um, the, of uh, Roe versus Wade or dealing with the issue of being pro life, which is very important. We have an opportunity here we can't miss. 314. 